I'll call the meeting to order. This is the July 17th public safety meeting, uh, which features a, an, uh, an update from the, the building inspector, Louis Hasbrook. Um, Councillor Carney will be absent, and Councillor Dwight will be arriving late. This meeting is audio and video recorded. It looks like there is no public comment because there's no one in the gallery. And yeah, report from the building commission. Okay, so I brought two sets of information. One is the uh, uh, report on the number of permits that, uh, and types of permits that the building department issued in fiscal year four, 2014. Um, and the other is information on um, demolition uh, orders to demolish uh, an existing building with, that presents hazardous conditions. And I'll just run through that procedure. The first sheet is a, a permit listing report showing the new structures that we permitted um, in FY14. Um, a sig significant number of single family homes, uh, actually on par with last year, the number of single family homes in Northampton has gone up. Is, has gone up considerably since uh, 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 2000, FY 12, 11, and 10. I think the commercial, I think we somehow in our, in our permit tracking software, we missed some commercial buildings. I don't know why, but um, I think there's two more than this. I don't think that the, 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 the Fairfield Inn got rolled into this. At least that. That the Fairfield looks like the, what the paper say it's going to be fall. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually uh, I'm headed down tomorrow at 9.30 to do a walkthrough uh, looking towards the final inspections. They're closing in on it. That's great because that, those are good income for the state, you know, with the rose taxes and everything. It's a nice addition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's, 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 it's looking, it looks very nice inside. One thing that I did, one, one concern that I had was that it was going to take uh, business away from the Quality Inn. The Quality Inn has done an awful lot to spruce up the place, and it's actually, a, their rooms are very nice now also. I mean, they've, they've gotten a new management company in the last, I think, three years, and they've come a long ways to making the rooms look very, very nice. So. You know, I, I don't know how much competition there will be, but, um, but I don't think the quality in gives away anything in terms of how nice the rooms are. So, um, now, now, just the total numbers of permits. Um, I, I got uh, building department revenues and from uh, FY07 to FY14, the year that's just finished. And then I also did numbers of permits from FY09 to FY14. And I think you can see that there's a steady uh, upward trend. Um, these are the years that the Building permit fees haven't changed, and uh, both numbers of permits and uh, uh, permit revenues have gone up steadily. Uh, we're sure. So look, um, just to go back a little bit. So it looks like the vast majority of new growth is the single-family home. Um, where are those? Can they, are there clusters throughout the city? Do you get, there's two, two things are happening. One thing is that um, 
there are some developments, most notably uh, the Hospital Hill development, but there's also a development on uh, off of Burt's Pit Road uh, called Emerson Way, and there have been a number of houses there, and then there's also um, Pat Melnick's development, Beaverbrook. Uh, so I, the majority are in those places, but the zoning has reached, there, there, there's been infill development on uh, previously uh, on existing lots even before the zoning changed. And now that the zoning's changed, we're, um, we're seeing an awful lot of permit applications, um, the, the initial permit applications for new housing on existing lots that were that would only be allowed under the recently revised zone. So that's really, that's really taking effect, you know, yeah. We're, I'm, the, the numbers of, uh, of uh, proposals that we're, that we're reviewing is, is, is very significant. And the, the new zoning is, is a little bit complicated and um, it's also being amended, so there's going to be a little bit more uh, a, it's changed a little bit since it was since it was adopted, but not significantly. But we're good. I know that we're going to see at least. I mean, I would estimate at least 15 and potentially more um, new dwelling units in the next year, just based on the changes in the zone. Yeah, that was substantial. I know of a number of lots that um, we've reviewed in the past that weren't. Uh, that weren't buildable and now are. And then there's also a number of lots that are being divided. Um, and when we finish with your B and C for the moratorium, is that There are a number of projects that are, I know, waiting for the changes, uh, on, when, wait for that moratorium to be built. I think the Shaw's will tell the Shaw's will Yeah, they're waiting. There have been some, some discussion about other possible ways to develop the property. They could get this, they could get the same number of dwelling units, I think, on the property by subdividing it and uh, putting up two family and three family houses. Um, but they do have a plan that they're wait, they're waiting for. And the other things that are on the horizon are more, more single families at, um, and more multifamilies at um, at Village Hill Hospital. Uh, another uh, assisted living facility um, is in the planning stages. You mean the uh, Christopher Heights? Um, I just issued the permit for the 44 units at the VA hospital I signed it today, mm -hmm. uh, the, the veterans housing, and uh, I, I will have the, um, the building permit for 38 units of housing at the Clark School redevelopment, and we've looked at some uh, preliminary plans for another 25 and those are in existing yeah. structures. Those are in existing structures. Did you want to speak to the memo that you attached? Um, in terms of uh, um, oh, this this next piece is is basically a history, a brief history of the um, since since early June of the of the Honda dealer, the former Honda dealer on King Street. Um, the the letter that's the first page is is the letter that um, 
we write when we've determined that a building uh, is unsafe, abandoned, un and, and the, I think the um, third page is the building code section on unsafe structures, and, and, and there's the language in the letter comes straight out of the building code language. But the first step is to um, uh, inform the owner that the building must be either made safe or demolished. And in this situation, we, we ordered it demolished because of the poor condition and we didn't think it could be secured against unauthorized entry. The next piece, which happened simultaneous with this one, is a survey done by uh, myself, the head of the fire department, the city engineer, and a disinterested third person to determine whether the building is can be made safe or needs to be demolished. And then the rest of it is the actual the code sections and the and, the, and then the uh, enabling legislation for the for the demolition of structures. And what happened this time is that the owner wasn't able to uh, meet our timeline for um, finding the contractor and that's why we came to city council um, to request the funds to do the work to, for the city to do the work and that and that provided a little more I, the, the owner then took in to uh, sign one of the contracts that we for them so they're stepping up and taking it down on their own. They are. The, the city won't be involved in that. When, when will when will it take place? Um, I the only piece of the puzzle that's left is the gas line, and there's a high pressure gas line to the building, and the um, Bay State gas needs to cut the street open to cap it at the at the main trunk line, and the permits are in place for that, and they think by the the uh, machinery is sitting there, sitting there waiting. <laughs> Big building munching machine. Oh, it's there? Uh, it's sitting on the yeah, parking lot. And, and, and the fencing is, is in place. Uh, and I've notified the abutters, and you know, we've, we've been through the process, so it really is just down to basically pulling the gas, you know, disconnecting the gas. Well, that would be great. It would actually look better without it because it's uh, got really nasty. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, it's it's gonna present a really different look. And uh, one thing I did bring is, is a list of what all could happen on that property. It's extensive. With the new zoning that we put in up there, um, what's it? Entryway business or something? It's called uh, it's called uh, entryway business, it, and it's a nice combination of the highway business and the downtown business. It's a little more allowance for retail uses um, but there's still an allowance for a lot of the traditional highway business uses and it, does, it doesn't allowance. require second floor now does it it requires height but, but not no. necessarily second floor because that was what made it hard to develop before was the old version of that but this is going to help a lot i think to inspire somebody to develop this site. i think the buildings are buildings that have been gone up or tall enough to be uh that's, that's two-story buildings and most of them have a mezzanine as opposed to a full second story when, um, whether it's office office space and uh, part storage space no, I'm very hopeful that that itself is nicer without the building and with the new zoning, we may finally get So we're talking about the the old Blyda Honda lot that hopefully with the building gone, we'll get somebody to bite at it to build it out. Was that part of the incentive that we tried to offer to Mr. Leah that he did this site more appealing? Yeah. Well, I think that that was part of the discussion. Um, I, did, I did work up a... Uh, uh, abbreviated uh, uh, a condensed version of what all would be allowed in that location um, and because it's entryway business it's been a pretty generous combination of what's allowed in the highway business and what's right. allowed that's that, uh, right at the juncture of the two zone gradations mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, he also is fortunate the building needs to go, but he's directly off. He's, there's a stoplight there already. It, there'll be very little discussion about, uh, there won't be the, the, the need to go through the whole process of adding a stoplight to an already. Well, of course, uh, it was the stoplight that actually created a problem for us before. Well, I think the. When, uh, uh, when King. King, uh, not King and Cush, but the Florence bank. Savings Bank was upset about the prospect of a bank in a box on his lot that would somehow free traffic issues that that intersection wouldn't be able to sustain. Which, oddly enough, that intersection that they contribute to these stressors on that intersection, but they were going to do a nuisance suit, and that was enough to scare the developer. That was the last straw for the developer who was actually pending for that sort of site. Based on projected traffic increases. Yeah. yeah, they wanted a turn lane. They wanted some turn lane or something in there. Well, it, 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 oddly enough, I believe that bank is already in violation of its existing restrictions when it was set up. You're not, they were not to allow left-hand turns out of their lot into. Uh, they now actually have a dedicated turn, turn lane. Left lane turn lane. In them. Yeah, they put the turn lane. But I believe that that was restricted on the, condi on the condition of setting up on that. I mean, it's clearly problematic and it's, you know, it's not accident generating, it's just traffic bonding. They were, thre they threatened to suit that it would impact their, adversely impact their business because- They're already in adverse situation. <laughs> yeah. Because another entry point for traffic signalization, uh, you know, a curb cut of opposite that light would contribute the, the, the diminishing of their business. On another side, has Smith submitted anything for the end of Paradise Road yet? Definitive stuff? Um, we'll get the uh, official, I, I've seen all the drawings, um, you know, the, the preliminary drawings, and I mean, they're, they're, they're nine, nine, they call them 90% drawings, they're 90% complete, they'll be minor changes. Um, and I expect that the permit application will come in uh, relatively soon. So they demoed the the old L point there already, or is I know it was scheduled for summer demolition. Uh, um, the old permit. I took uh, Thursday off. I need to be retrained. I can't remember <laughs> <laughs> whether um, what I. I think we've seen the um, demolition permit applications. I don't believe they've started. Because they've got the hang of that now. They come in their year in advance of when they actually want to do it and start. Well, they they did for that um, six, number 65, the house that they had planned on moving. And apparently, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to move it. So they're, you know, and, and the approval for the demolition of the other two houses was based on saving that house. And so they, if they came back to request that they could demolish that house, they think that they'd find that they had another year to wait. To. Which is too bad because they're the ones that have the best option is for a place to put it close because they control everything around it. Be interesting at, uh, between the new zoning and the fact that they own everything around there, but they can find a place to put it. The, uh, the, the laws are set up so that the city has to allow, and the, and the utility companies have to allow someone to move a house. And so, um, at one of the prospective locations was down on uh, the corner of South Street and Fruit Street. And uh, I would come right down Elm Street right through the intersection and right that's a huge, it's a kind of a big house for I know that they can build on that site but it would seem to me you have a lot easier time building a house that was designed to fit the site than just it actually looks yeah, I, I looked at it and you know I could imagine that it would be a, a, a really positive uh, um, uh, house for that corner lot it would give a parcel and you know give that intersection a nice look the big thing is the utilities, right? Taking down the line. Mm -hmm. Coming down, it, it traversed most of the campus. Remove the telephone 
samples if needed. Right. Um, you know, that's what what Jordy Errol had to do in the uh, the what's his house here. And uh, same location anyway. So do, do we allow that stuff, right? Oh okay. We have to <laughs> Okay, good. I thought you were saying I thought you were suggesting that we don't allow that or that that was one of the conditions and that was kind of painting them into a corner. Well the condition was they not that they not demo it, that they got proposed right. that they would move the house. Right. Okay. I don't know where the intention to move it to was, but somehow it seems that it's particularly viable at this point. That's too bad. Are there any other blighted properties? Now, I remember when we were looking at several years ago, we actually wanted to put essentially a blight restriction on um, any empty buildings that after a certain period of time of determination the building of the city would require it to be torn down at the, at the expense of the owners. And it turned out the state, the Commonwealth, wasn't going to allow us to actually make that a condition. No, so, it's it's, some, it's something that's already regulated by other statutes, and I think that's safety why. statutes, right? right. And, and I the package on the back pages is how the, the situation with Don Lee had developed, and the and then the criteria from the building code, and then from the enabling legislation, and then um, also how it gets how the um, uh, monies if the city does have to do it, how the monies get repaid. And is it, is it different between commercial properties and, and uh, residential properties? Um, no, the Board of Health might uh, might uh, consider a, a residential property uh, unsafe for human habitation, um, but the specifics of um, abandon unused open to the weather which um, or present a significant hazard in case of fire come out of the building code um, and uh, so if we had um, if we have buildings that uh, um, that were you know abandoned and weren't boarded up then uh, I would have to move them. Uh, and the one Building. There was a garage over on the corner of uh, Highland Ave and, and Carson Street is the back street there, and, and we ordered that demolished and that got taken down. Um, we ordered the house on Woodmont that was replaced, ultimately, um, the corner of Woodmont and um, Bradford Street. Or really? Um, ordered that demolished because that had been in that situation. There's a, there's a few other properties but in town, but right now they're securely, they're secure against entry. Uh, the interesting thing about the, uh, the Honda dealership was that people were bound and determined to get in. I mean, it's not, um, they boarded up some of the doors in the back and people came and literally stole the plywood. And then went in. Um, and uh, when they did finally get the first floor, you know, secure, they were, people started climbing up onto the roof and kicking in the second story. Were there any evidence of people squatting? Um, yeah. There's not an epidemic of blighted buildings. This is kind of an exception, I suppose. I think, you know, Northampton's fortunate in the sense that um, property values are um, higher. Holyoke and Springfield, and I don't know about Westfield, but I do know Holyoke and Springfield, um, are stuck with a lot of properties which are abandoned by the landlords. Um, but there's not sort of the and it's not that the property doesn't have any value, but the property values aren't high enough to encourage someone to go and tear the house down and then, and then rebuild in that location. Uh, and so, the, so they're stuck with having to move forward. Um, the, the owner of this lot, though, they're, they're, they're tax, the property taxes are up to get up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get up, um, they'll have a, uh, 
Well, actually, when they take the building down from look at a, 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 a tax rate, the tax payments will go down to, uh, by about $22,000 a year. Um, and I think there are other factors that, that bear on why they were reluctant to tear building down and this court cases pending. Um, but it came that, you know, it reached a point where there was, you know, there was, they couldn't do anything else to tear it down as far as um, the city is concerned. You know, I, I hope not, to, I, this, I don't think that this is going to be a regular occurrence. We are, pay, we are paying attention, we are a little bit driven by complaints because there's an awful lot of houses around and uh, there were a, a number of uh, foreclosed properties in the Ryan Road neighborhood, but they all, uh, and I think they're all, they've all been uh, recycled, recycled, bought up, fixed up. Along. There was one that um, there was one on uh, I can't remember the name. Of this there was one on the corner of Clark Street for a while, right? And that one's that been worked on. Refer. I just went across the street from that, and they're working on that one. Right. Yeah. Um, the uh, but you know, there's a, there's enough of a sort of a intrinsic value. That that is uh, is the high enough value that people do go for. Um, but if anybody hears, you know, absolutely, if people hear about it, let us know. We will go forward. Is there anything? Is there any other? Are there any other questions for Mr. Hanford? No, and I my apologies for my party. Very frustrated behind a very slow moving truck on Route 9. Seeing a lot of things I shouldn't say. So, you need a motion of the. Should I move we approve minutes? Uh, please. Then I'll move we approve minutes. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And is there any new business? Then I'll move we adjourn. Um, Unless you have other minutes. I just have a question. Are we, are we going to meet in August or are we? I think we're scheduled for a meeting first week of August. I don't know what the chair is. Uh, let's see who's next up. Yes, she is. Is the fire department next? Yes, sir. Yeah. Seems like we just saw them too. Yeah, it's <laughs> And we take. I don't know, it's probably police. Was the last time we saw the police when the chief gave his report? So yeah. Back in February. That yeah. sounds right. Maybe, maybe, maybe March. March. I think it's police. So, but yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anything from the chair that would indicate that we wouldn't be meeting. But. Yeah, but I'd appreciate if the chair would look at what our schedule is. Yeah, because I want to be first week and off. And if our schedule fits, stuff taking August off and then see everybody. You can see all the departments from September to December. Yeah, and you're going to be way maybe we'll take August off. If that works out for you, you make the next yeah. yeah. okay, I just want to point out that you guys are scheduled for um, September 7th, which is a holiday. So. Oh, you are taking that one off. That's right, Labor Day is late. Well, I'll have to leave that up to, I think we should leave that up to the chair. Ah, to okay. make that executive decision. I think so. I'm all for it. If it requires a vote, I need to move it. But. <laughs> <laughs> then I will move it here. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you.